Lawrence Kasdan is a talentless hack. So I was inspired to make this video because of the misguided sentiment that after A New Hope, Lawrence Kasdan saved the sequels to A New Hope from the ever George Lucas. Of course, this narrative is completely ignorant. But what really kickstarted this video script was a Quora.com thread about myths and misconceptions about Star Wars. Characters' backstories being cleared up was fine, but there were a lot of real-world misconceptions alongside easily refutable claims. One was some dumbass still trying to argue that you don't need formal training, which I mean, I've already disputed that. Another was trying to say that the Sith aren't evil, which is moronic to anyone who watches the films, and on top of that, reads the books. In all the material, they make it quite clear that the Sith are absolutely evil by the stretch of the imagination, and that the simple practice of the dark side is evil because it corrupts life around the user. There is no way to use the dark side in moderation. Then I saw someone trying to defend Rose Tarko of all characters. Everybody knows Rose Tarko is pointless and terrible. That's why sequel fans just cherry pick the criticisms we make and they never bring up Rose Taco because there's no way they're going to win the fucking argument. I guess at least with the other criticisms they can live under the delusion that they're correct because they can muster enough misunderstandings and mental gymnastics for that at least. For a thread dedicated to debunking misconceptions, the people in this thread Sure are further spreading misconceptions, but the one of focus is basically some idiot trying to give all of George Lucas's achievements to Lawrence Kasdan. Hell, a desperate sequel fan after I debunked him a thousand times over, mustered up the Lawrence Kasdan argument in a context where he was like, But Lawrence Kasdan was an OG writer, so your criticism about authenticity are wrong, cause he helped write The Force Awakens too. But this is no gotcha argument. This isn't the first time I've heard this cheap shot, but this idea that Lawrence Kasdan is an OG is completely wrong. Because anyone who does proper research will know that Lawrence Kasdan contributed very, very little to Star Wars. Okay, he contributed a lot, but not in a good way. So my main source for the information will be the J.W. Renzel books. They are massive eye-openers to anyone who still believes that crap said by the prequel haters. So let's begin. So most if not everyone would at least agree Lawrence Kasdan had nothing to do with the original movie. So to get around that, OT purists source false narratives like Saved in the Edit, even though every movie is saved in the edit. Like when George Lucas saved Empire Strikes Back in the edit. But it's not a story the mainstream internet would tell you. Anyhow, let's start with the actual relevant history. So, George Lucas was the main writer of Empire Strikes Back. He came up with the story and co-wrote it with a woman named Leigh Brackett, who passed away in 1978, and she's featured as a writer in the film's credits out of respect. Around the later drafts, Lucas needed a co-writer to clean up the script. He hired Lawrence Kasdan specifically for that. Take a big guess on what happened from there. Drum roll please. And what he added to Star Wars was... Revisions on Yoda's dialogue. <laughs> That's it. So if not for Lawrence Kasdan, I guess you could say Yoda's dialogue would have been a bit different. Woo. Okay, he also helped with one or two scenes involving Han and Leia. But that was about it. There's not a lot to say about Lawrence Kasdan there, because he didn't do much. George Lucas was the main writer, Leigh Brackett was the second biggest influence, and in last place, we have Lawrence Kasdan, who contributed very little. So let's move on to Return of the Jedi. Since he was a co-writer from the start there, you may think that Lawrence Kasdan was at least a big help for Lucas, but that's extremely flattering at best. I want to start by pointing out that Kasdan didn't want to write another Star Wars movie, but he felt he owed George a favour because of the help that he had provided with his directorial debut, Body Heat. So, when it comes to writing Return of the Jedi, Kasdan helped with several things, 
but not a lot. Lucas's original idea for the climax was to have two Death Stars and the Imperial Capital, which was then called Had Abaddon, which both Lawrence Kasdan and the director Richard Marquand suggested they combine the three. And Lucas himself agreed to this and realized that the Imperial Capital wasn't financially viable. So technically the climax was changed by Kasdan and Marquand by suggestion, but in essence, the change was mostly to simplify things. George Lucas very much intended to one-up the first film with two Death Stars instead of one, which is essentially the same as the beefed up Death Star 2. Also, the Imperial Capital would have been cool to see, but I guess the special edition fixed that. And I do prefer Coruscant over Had Abaddon as the planet's name. So anyways, his other contribution was to the film's opening sequence, with Jabba's palace and stuff, while George had wrote something much more simplified. To be honest, with George's original version, if they condensed Han's rescue, then the two Death Stars in Coruscant would have worked in the film just fine. I imagine most of the plot would have been the Battle of Had Abaddon. But Lawrence Kasdan put forth many terrible ideas for Return of the Jedi, all of which were rejected by Lucas. You want to know what these ideas were? Well, I'll name a bunch of them. First, he suggested killing off Luke Skywalker, which Lucas rejected because duh. Kasdan along with Harrison Ford next tried to kill off Han Solo, which of course Lucas rejected because he wanted the happy ending. Another rejected idea was having Luke pretend to join the Emperor and then fire on Habd Abaddon instead of the Rebel fleet, which sounds absolutely terrible because the Imperial capital would have had a lot of civilians on it. And the final planet Coruscant was established as having over 2 trillion people. Of course, Lucas just went with the forest moon of Endor, because that makes a lot more sense than the earlier versions. There was also an utterly bizarre idea to make Luke the president of the galaxy. I am not shitting you. One of Lawrence Kasdan's worst ideas though, was making a spin-off trilogy, where Luke Skywalker finds his long lost sister Neela Skywalker, which of course, Lucas rejected. In fact, Lucas rejected Kasdan's terrible ideas so many times that Kasdan got angry and refused to help him write the prequel trilogy when he went around to making it. Lucas actually asked him three separate times for each movie, but Kasdan refused each time. So it wasn't like Lucas didn't think he needed the supposed genius of Lawrence Kasdan. Alright, so now that leads us into The Force Awakens, and as we all know, he wrote that film with J.J. Abrams and what did they do? They plagiarized A New Hope, and Kasdan got what he wanted when he could finally kill Han Solo off. And then he wrote Solo, and I'm, I'm not even going there. And Lawrence Kasdan is supposedly going to make a documentary about George Lucas and ILM for Disney+. Plus. Count me out. So that's Lawrence Kasdan's complete role in Star Wars. Not exactly a god of the OT, is he? Like, he came up with Yoda's backwards talking, but as I've discussed, he never came up with any revolutionary story ideas. It was mostly just refining what George had already written. When I'm writing something, I sometimes ask other people what they think and if I missed anything, but the bulk of the work remains mine. Some people have tried to give him the credit for the Vader as Luke's father plot twist, and this is completely false. Lawrence Kasdan has never taken credit for the twist, and Lucas always insisted he came up with it while he was writing A New Hope in 1976. Yeah, I used to think he came up with it after A New Hope, but you learn something new every day. Also, that desperate sequel fan from earlier also took something extremely out of context from the production and tried saying it was Lucas's actual plan. And he's of course referring to when David Prowse the body actor for Darth Vader, was told to say Obi-Wan was your father, which was always a fake outline. Only a select few people knew about the twist before the film's release, and George didn't want it leaking. So there's the complete story of Lawrence Kasdan and Star Wars. There really wasn't a lot to talk about when it comes to the two original trilogy sequels, but there's plenty to talk about when it comes to The Force Awakens and Solo, a Star Wars story. So if you want to credit Lawrence Kasdan for anything, it's a few teeny tiny itty bitty changes to the original trilogy and the entirety of these two piles of shit. I'm JJ Plagiarisms, and until next time...
What are stories about mystery boxes? Water was right.